In a tall, thin house, sandwiched between two other long, thin houses, there lived a cat. This cat was very orange and very round, so the little girl who owned her called her Pumpkin. Pumpkin would spend her days mewing at birds, nibbling at bits of string, and sometimes, when she had nothing better to do, she would try and climb the curtain. Dad didn't like it when she did that. They said she was much too heavy and she would surely pull them down. But Pumpkin would just rub against their ankles and purr, and soon they would forget all about it. Most of Pumpkin's time was spent taking long, lazy catnaps. Oh, she loved snoozing and stretching and curling up in a ball. She would catnap anywhere. Once, the humans laughed when they returned home and found Pumpkin snuggled up on the highest shelf in the kitchen, between the dried pasta and the cans of baked beans. They couldn't imagine how she got up there. Sometimes, if there was a human around, Pumpkin would doze off on their lap, reaching her paws over her head and thrusting her big belly into the air, demanding tickles and pats. Pumpkin loved both of the humans in her house, but her very best human was Flo, the little girl who lived there. Flo and Pumpkin had so much fun together. They played with a bunch of feathers tied to a long piece of string. Having Flo bob the feathers up and down and drag them across the floor as Pumpkin pounced and skidded along trying to catch them. They played with ping pong balls felt mice toys and balls of yarn too. Pumpkin would spend a lot of her time in Flo's room, brushing against her ankles and getting in the way whilst Flo was dancing, sulking in the laundry basket if Flo ever trod on her tail. Whenever that did happen, Flo would scoop Pumpkin up in her arms and the two would waltz around the room together until Pumpkin was purring again. Flo was her very best friend, and she loved spending time with her. Flo was so kind and loving that Pumpkin even let her dress her up however she wanted. She had collected quite the collection of little hats for Pumpkin. A frilly bonnet, a pink cowboy hat, a set of sunshine yellow petals that turned her face into the centre of a flower and a knitted beanie shaped like a strawberry. Each had little slits in them for Pumpkin's ears, and Flo would laugh and laugh when she put them on. Pumpkin felt quite silly in the hats, especially the frilly bonnet, but she put up with it just to hear the tinkling sound of Flo's giggles. Today, though, Flo was at school, Pumpkin could hardly understand why school was so important. But Flo had told her that she loved going to school, playing with her human friends, and learning about fizzy science experiments in faraway places. Pumpkin thought that since Flo enjoyed school so very much, she would just have to make do and stay home without her. Pumpkin had spent the morning eating kibble and batting the piece of toilet roll that dangled from its holder with her paw. She had walked tightrope along the back of the sofa and played football with a pair of dad's socks for a while. Now it was time to indulge in her favourite activity. It was time to take a cat nap. Pumpkin climbed up onto the squishiest sofa cushion and began her wind-down routine. She needed the pillow for a while, stretching and wriggling each of her toes, and making sure the pillow was plump and pliable. Then, she hunched back on her back legs, and stretched out her front ones, reaching as far as she could, and splaying her paws. Next, She yawned, possibly the biggest yawn any cat 
as yawned before, with her eyes tightly closed. Content, she turned around in a circle and curled up in a little ball, wrapping her extra fluffy tail around her body like a feather boa. One minute later, she opened her eyes again. Why was she still awake? She closed her eyes. Usually she would be snoring softly by now and dreaming of a land made of kibble. But she just wouldn't drift off. Maybe the sofa wasn't the right place for this afternoon's catnap. Pumpkin stretched her legs, uncurled her tail and hopped onto the carpet. She click-clacked her way into the kitchen and through to the laundry room. Next to the dryer was a big wicker basket full of fresh laundry. Pumpkin pulled herself up to peer over the rim and sniffed. It smelt like fresh cotton and home. She looked in further. Dad had just washed his fluffy dressing gown. Perfect. She hunched down on her haunches and after two practice bounces, launched her round body up and into the basket. Pumpkin twisted herself up in a knot of fluffy laundry and plopped down on her belly. Lovely. It was very comfy and it smelled so clean. But something wasn't quite right. She had waited too long, and the laundry had lost the heat it had held when it first tumbled out of the dryer. Pumpkin lazed around in there for a while anyway, enjoying the comfy cocoon of the fresh towels and clean socks. Then she tumbled out of the basket and set out again in pursuit of her catnap. She trotted through the kitchen and toddled into the sunroom. She weaved through the potted plants and clambered up onto the windowsill. She passed the family photos, fondly patting a photo of Flo on the way by, and reached her favourite spot, in between the potted petunias and the begonias. She flopped down on her belly and stretched out. As she did so, the sun emerged from behind a fluffy cloud and began streaming its golden rays through the sunroom's large windows. Pumpkin sighed and emitted a deep purr as the warmth sunk into her fur. In the sun, her orange fur was lit up in all of its glory, in its many shades of orange, mainly tangerine, peach and apricot. The smudges of white under her belly and on her chin glowed in the sun. She lazed around, enjoying the sun's rays, feeling warm, relaxed and ever so sleepy but something wasn't quite right. The windowsill felt a little too hard to be comfortable today, and she kept having to roll and wriggle around. Pumpkin rolled back onto her paws and rubbed her eyes. Maybe a walk would tire her a little more. Pumpkin headed to the cat flap and rolled out into the yard. She trotted across the patio and headed into the shed for a while, sniffing at Dad and Flo's wellies and pouring at the jumbo bag of kibble he kept in there. Try as she might, she just couldn't poke a hole in the bag big enough to extract a cat biscuit. So she shrugged and headed out towards the garden. She sauntered around the grass, poking her head into the flower beds and tasting a few leaves. 
when she passed a holly bush in the corner, she heard a peculiar noise. It was a tap, 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 and a click, clack, and the soft hum of a tune. Pumpkin furrowed her brow. Now, what could that be? She poked her head into the bush, and she couldn't believe what she saw. It was Elsie the hedgehog, sitting on her spiky bottom, humming to herself. She had two sticks in her hands, connected to a big ball of yarn. She was moving the sticks in a strange pattern, as if doing a little dance with her hands. Hello, Elsie, Pumpkin said. I don't want to be rude, but I don't think that's how you're supposed to play with a ball of wool. You're supposed to roll it and chase it around, sliding across the floor as you go. Elsie chuckled. <laughs> Hello, Pumpkin, she said her smile beaming out from underneath her flower-topped hat. You're quite right. That is how you play with yarn. But I'm not playing. I'm knitting. Elsie peered at Pumpkin with her kind brown eyes, scrunching her pointy little nose. What are you doing out here at this time? Shouldn't you be napping? Usually, I see you snoozing on the windowsill at this time, or napping in the flower beds. Pumpkin sighed. I just can't drift off today, Elsie. I just can't get comfortable enough. Elsie smiled kindly. Well, Pumpkin, when my hedgehog children were just wee little hoglets, and they were struggling to drift off, we would take a walk and shake out our arms and legs to get rid of any leftover energy and drink some warm milk. Then we would all put on our fluffiest pyjamas, take some long, deep breaths, and think of calming thoughts until we all drifted off. Pumpkin frowned. Pajamas? Flo had pajamas. They were yellow and soft, covered with pictures of clouds and little sheep. She would always put them on at bedtime, and she would fall asleep every time. Pumpkin knew this because she always snuggled up next to Flo until she was fast asleep, before slinking off to her own bed until the morning. But Pumpkin didn't have any pyjamas of her own. Elsie, where can I get my own pair of pyjamas? Pumpkin asked. Elsie tapped a knitting needle against her chin as she thought. Well, I don't know where Cat's pyjamas come from, Elsie admitted. But maybe I can help a little. We'll start with some fluffy socks. I love having toasty feet when I'm napping. Pumpkin beamed at Elsie and said thank you five times. She purred excitedly and held the yarn between her paws, unfurling it gently for Elsie as she clacked away with her needles. She fought against the temptation to throw the yarn in the air and chase it around the garden until it all unraveled into a big pile, waiting patiently whilst Elsie worked her magic. Elsie hummed as she worked, and Pumpkin joined in, bobbing her head back and forth. Little by little, the yarn turned into one big fluffy sock, then two, then three, then four. 
Elsie tied the socks together with a ribbon and attached them to the back of Pumpkin's collar so she could take them back to the house without getting them dirty. Pumpkin did a little jig of happiness as she looked at her new socks and thanked Elsie again, giving her a careful cuddle, making sure not to prick her paws on Elsie's spines. Then Pumpkin emerged from the holly bush and into the sunshine, carrying her new socks on her back. Now all she needed was some fluffy trousers and a comfy shirt. Where would she find those? Pumpkin squeezed through the hole in the back fence and headed out into the world beyond. She trampled over the long grass, through the bramble bushes, sampling a delicious blackberry or two on her way. The garden backed onto a nature reserve, and it was one of Pumpkin's favourite places to explore. She ambled across the meadow and sniffed at all the flowers, soon finding herself gazing at her reflection in the green, mossy pond. She looked at herself, pondering her next move. Where could she find some cat's pyjamas? A movement in the reflection caught her eye. She thought it was a cloud at first, drifting overhead. But looking up into the sky above her, she realised she was wrong. Bordering the pond, towering over her fluffy head, were long grassy reeds. They were a very tall plant, and on top, cream fluff burst out of its stem, like the tail of a golden retriever. Pumpkin gently lowered one of the reeds with her paw and felt the material it grew. It was easy to mistake as a cloud. It was the softest, fuzziest thing Pumpkin had ever felt, bar her own fur. And Pumpkin rubbed her face against it with a rumbling purr. She barely even noticed when someone hopped to her side. How do you do? A voice called up at Pumpkin, and she looked down with a start. At her paws was a little frog. He was a very grand-looking frog, standing tall on his long legs, wearing a tweed waistcoat and a flat cap. He had a silk handkerchief around his neck and a shining brooch pinned to the lapel of his very smart blazer. Pumpkin smiled and greeted the funny little frog. She told him she loved his clothes, especially the silk handkerchief, which reminded her of the ribbon Flo wore in her hair on special occasions. The frog bowed his head bashfully and thanked her. He noticed the reed in Pumpkin's paw and smiled. He said they were the softest thing in the whole nature reserve and that he had used some to carpet his house. The living room rug was now the best place in the world for an afternoon nap. Pumpkin nodded. She told the frog that she loved napping too but she was having trouble drifting off today. She'd realised that what she was missing was a pair of pyjamas, and she wished she could find some as soft as the tufty reed. Where do you find your clothes? she asked the frog. He smiled modestly and admitted that he made them himself, sewing with spider's silk and a pine needle. Pumpkin gasped and told him he was ever so clever. The frog puffed with pride 
and told Pumpkin to wait right there. Pumpkin sat frozen on the spot as the frog hopped between the long grass and disappeared. He emerged a minute later with a spool of gleaming silver thread and a green, sweet-smelling needle. He told Pumpkin that he believed everyone deserved a pair of fluffy pyjamas, especially a kind kitty like her and he thought he had found the perfect material. Pumpkin beamed and clapped her paws in excitement, thanking the frog over and over again. The pair set to work, with Pumpkin gathering pawfuls of fluff and delivering them to the frog, who had stitched them carefully his long, sticky tongue sticking out in concentration. Soon, they had created the most beautiful pair of trousers, as light and soft as the clouds. Pumpkin bounded back over to the reeds and readied herself to pounce for more fluff. But there was none. Pumpkin looked worriedly over to the frog, who chuckled. <laughs> Don't worry, the frog said. It'll grow back very soon. But today, there was only enough for your trousers. Pumpkin smiled. They're the best trousers in the world, she said. Thank you. She rolled them up tight, and the frog helped her attach them to the back of her collar. She said goodbye to the frog and promised to visit again soon, before padding off into the woods, searching for the last piece of the pyjama puzzle. Before long, she emerged into the park where people were walking their dogs reading books on the lawn, and playing games like frisbee. As she passed, Pumpkin ran into the game, leaping up with her big paws and catching the frisbee expertly in her mouth. But then she placed it down gently on the grass and shook her head. She couldn't play right now. She was on a very important mission. As she passed the play park, a little boy ran over and asked if he could pet her. She was never too busy for that, so she nodded enthusiastically and rolled out on the grass to have her tummy tickled. The boy introduced himself as Percy, chatting to Pumpkin as he tickled her ears about spaceships and unicorns and anything else that popped into his mind. Soon, Percy noticed the very important items Pumpkin was carrying. He inspected the fuzzy socks and unrolled the trousers, exclaiming that they were the coziest trousers he had ever laid his eyes upon. Pumpkin smiled proudly. Percy furrowed his brows in thought. You have four cosy socks, he said, and some very fuzzy pyjama bottoms, but there's something missing. Percy thought for three more seconds before his eyes lit up like a light bulb had just illuminated in his mind. I know just what you need, he said. Wait here. Pumpkin froze again, vowing not to move a whisker until Percy returned. Percy ran back into the midst of the play park to collect his mum, and the two of them headed towards the car park, deep in conversation. 
Before long, Percy was back. In his hands, he had a soft, light blue jumper that looked as if it was made from the lightest candy floss. It was the perfect size for pumpkin. This belongs to my teddy bear, Percy said. His name is Charlie. Charlie has so many clothes. I think he would want you to have this. He looks better in purple anyway. Pumpkin purred like a motor car and whizzed in figure eights around Percy's legs. It was perfect. She purred thank you to him and Percy tucked the jumper into Pumpkin's collar. With a hop, skip and a jump and one last purred thank you, Pumpkin headed home. She hurried through the park, skipped through the nature reserve and pranced through the garden in excitement. Through her cat flap she squeezed and she padded through to the sitting room where she flopped down on the sofa. That adventure was tiring. Pumpkin undid the ribbon attached to her collar letting her new pyjamas fall onto the cushion. She admired them with a soft smile on her face, paws clasped to her heart. Then she carefully put on each fuzzy sock. They were striped in the most vibrant pinks and oranges, which perfectly complemented her fur. She curled her toes carefully as she put them on so as not to snag the yarn with her claws. Then she sighed in contentment. Her little paws were so warm and cosy. She wriggled her toes in satisfaction. Then she pulled on her cloud-like trousers, smiling happily, letting her tail glide through the specially created hole and flicking it back and forth happily. Finally, she put on Charlie's jumper, which wrapped her up like a hug. She felt as snugly as a teddy bear and thought that she was so comfortable she could drift into the sky. As she admired her pyjamas, she heard the familiar sound of the front door. It was Flo and Dad, home at last. Flo bounded into the hallway, calling out for Pumpkin. Pumpkin, you'll never guess what I made for you at school. Pumpkin pricked up her ears and turned to the door, waiting for Flo to tumble through. Soon, Flo found her and gave her a tight squeeze. She noticed Pumpkin's beautiful new pyjamas and complimented them profusely. She said it was good that Pumpkin had found her pyjamas today as Flo had brought the perfect finishing piece to her outfit. From behind her back, she produced a little something made of soft, floppy felt. It was a carefully crafted nightcap that drooped to a point and ended with a fluffy white pom-pom. It was covered with the daintiest embroidery the shape of tiny crescent moons. Flo had made it in art class. She put it on Pumpkin's head. It fit perfectly, wrapping her furry head snugly, leaving space for her ears to poke through so she could still hear Flo's voice. Pumpkin's heart glowed. 
her pyjamas were complete. Before long, Flo had put on her own pyjamas and curled up on the sofa with her favourite book. Pumpkin curled up contentedly on her lap with her fluffy little ears poking through her nightcap. Every inch of her body covered in soft, fuzzy material. She looked less like a pumpkin and more like a cloud. As Flo absent-mindedly stroked her ears, Pumpkin drifted off into a long, deep catnap, dreaming and floating through the starry sky, purring softly. <laughs>